And let's post the link for all people. So here's one. And let's also post it here for our people, okay? Hmm. I'm not sure why it looks this way. That's weird. But okay, no problem. Okay, then. So let me just go while this is working quickly. I'll be in Obsidian Sanctum for now. Now, before we get started, please understand that this training is going to be for basics, firebrand. I intentionally am not going to go over advanced stuff, like for example, combo fields, or what will happen if you try to get on or out of storms very quickly for certain purposes or whatever the case is. It's just going to explain the basics. And then once we are done, I'm going to also explain what uh, our guild will do in terms of firebrand and the kind of setup we're going to start with and that kind of stuff. Um, if we have any questions, I will make sure to leave certain parts for questions. But um, if you want to add anything else, like for example, let's say you felt like you want to add some sort of a tip or anything, if you don't mind, let's please not do that because I want to make sure that the training and what we're going to explain is going to only cover certain points. I don't want to overwhelm or overcomplicate things on purpose. So please don't add anything to what I'll explain. However, of course, you can correct me if you felt like I said something wrong. Like let's say I said stand your ground will do a million damage, we remove 50 conditions, and I'm going to apply one hour of quickness. You can call me out on it. But aside from that, if possible, let's not do that. Um, so with a new balance patch that came, uh, let me just disable team chat here, I guess. Actually, I'm just going to disable all of this for now. So with the latest balance patch, um, the mantras are back to how they used to work. So for those of you who don't know what it means, now, in order for you to use any of your charges on your mantras, you must irradiate first. So you need to do this. And now you're going to have the charges from your mantra. If you look at the top right corner here, you will see a small number three. This is how many charges you have remaining. So again, we are back to having three charges, which also means that this works with an ammunition system. And if you hover, let's take Mantra of Lore as a, another example, because I think this will maybe confuse people with the timers. Um, so if you look here, when you hover on any of the mantras, you will notice there's something called charge time. That charge time will vary based on your own build. But basically what this means is if I use one charge right now, like this, you can see the number is now two and you will see some sort of like a white thing going around the border of the skill. When it reaches the end, it is going to give you one charge back. And also this is going to take 25 seconds to complete. And this is a, a charge time you see here on the skill. This applies for all your mantras. All of them will work exactly the same way. All of them, once you ready or charge them, will give you three charges by default and then as you use the charges they are going you can see the new number here and then you can see each one of them have a different recovery time it's called charge recovery time so each one of them will have a certain cooldown as long as you have at least one charge remaining your, uh, the charges will come back just give it more time and it will come back so you can see it went from one to two and then it will go up to three if i give it more time however if I use all the charges at once, without allowing it to come back, the whole mantra goes on cooldown and I can't use it anymore. I have to wait for it to come back and then charge it and then use those charges again or ready it and then use those charges again. However, there's also a good thing to this because the last charge is going to apply a different, um, it's going to basically be stronger. So each mantra is going to work exactly this way. The first two charges will apply some sort of a benefit and the last charge will work in a stronger way. So if you look at Mantra of Liberation, for example, the first two charges are going to provide one stack of stability with resolution and it's also an AOE stun break. 
However, the last charge is going to apply five stacks of stability for longer duration even, probably double the amount. And then you have resolution, again, almost double the amount, and on top of that, swiftness. And the same will work for Mantra of Lore, for example. This is the one that will cleanse. The first two charges will remove two conditions, while the last one will convert five conditions into boons. So more cleanses, and on top of that, it converts them into boons. And the last one here for Mantra of Solace, for example, this will also, the first two charges will apply ages, and the last one will apply ages, protection, and resolution for you and allies in a radius around you. So, when we use all the three charges, it goes on cooldown, and we cannot use it anymore until the whole thing comes back online. But, in return, the last charge, if we needed to use it, kind of like as a desperate measure, if you will, it gives us much more benefits, and it kind of justifies it going on or cooldown. So, do we have any questions about mantras so far? I will take that as a no. Next, let's go ahead and talk about tombs and how they work. Because this also changed a little bit, maybe since from before or something. But you can now use your tomes anytime you want. So there's no cooldown. You can switch in and out of your tomes freely. And all of them work the same way. Now they will share the pages. So those blue dots you can see on the right side, they are called pages. Every time I use a skill, if you hover on it, it will say it will consume a certain amount of pages. So for example, this skill will consume one page. So if I use it, you can see that the number now went to buy one. While, for example, a skill like this is going to consume two pages. So if I use it now, it went down by two pages. You may not have noticed, but one page got very quickly, and then when I use it, it consumed two again. I'm going to use this one again. This is going to consume two pages also, and it went down. I guess we got another one quickly, but okay, here we go. Oh my god, it keeps doing this. Okay, well, but anyways, I hope you notice it consumes two pages, basically. So each skill will consume a, an, a certain number of pages, and when you hover on the skill, it will tell you what the amount of pages are. And if I consume all the pages, for example, then also even if I change tombs, it will still have the same amount. So they share the cooldown, or so they share the amount of pages between them. Those pages are not exclusive to a certain tomb. Now, you will also notice that some of them are going to be red, while some of them are blue. So why is that the case? That's because in some, not all, of those tomes, they will work with certain traits. So, for example, if we look here, let's say in the virtuous trait line, the Grand Master trait in Nomitable Courage, this is going to give us three stacks of stability when we use our F3, when we activate our F3. Not a certain skill in the F3, just by going into Tome 3. So that's a trait that is going to give us a certain effect when, we, uh, when you activate the virtue, right? So this is exactly what the red thing means. So as of right now, you can see that this tome is on red, which means you have already gotten that effect from it. And if I go in and out of tome three, I'm not getting the stability. Okay? But you can also see something called dormant courage. So dormant courage and then dormant resolve and such. This means that you will not get the passive effect until this whole thing is disappears, until the skill is blue again and this thing disappears from your bar. Now that this is blue, if I go to my F3 again, now I get the benefits of going to the tomb. Now I get the extra stability. Now I get the other boons because you also get other, like the other trace will give you other boons when you go to your tombs and stuff. So this is what this red icon means. It means that if you go in and out of your tomb, it doesn't matter how many times you will do that, you will not get any passive effect and it will, you will only get it once when this icon is no longer red, when this icon is blue. So again, same thing, for example, if I go right now to my Tome of Resolve, I got some boons, and now it went to red. Now it says Dormant Resolve, and I have to wait 40 seconds until I can get the passive or the uh, active effects when I go to it again. And so on, and so on, and so on. So this is how Tombs, and this is how Mantras work. Now, we already explained... Uh, the tomes, like Mantra of Liberation, for example, this applies stability, resolution, Mantra of Lordis will cleanse and such, Mantra of Solace will apply ages and heal and such. Um, sure, but please understand that this is like not a final build or anything, and as usual, please understand that this is probably not going to be what everyone will want to run. Maybe you are going to have other guilds and other commanders will work some variation of this build, which will still go over them as we go. 
Um, okay, so let's talk about the skills from the tombs themselves. So while we are on Tomb of Resolve, well, I guess we can start with Tomb of Courage. So Tomb of Courage, you can consider it your support tomb. This is where you are going to get a lot of your boons and such. So if you look at your skill number five, this is going to give an effect that is going to be called Unbroken Line, which will give you and allies 200 toughness and it will stay for five seconds. It will also give protection. It will give one stack of stability and it will give ages. And this will work in a radius of 600. And then skill number four, this is going to apply a field on the ground that will keep pulsing resistance every second and it will stay for four seconds, for a total of four seconds. It stays one second then, and then it pulses three seconds, so a total of four seconds. And it's also a stun break. This will work in a radius of 360. Skill number three, this is going to apply a field like this, and this is going to be a reflect dome. So if enemies are trying to maybe um, hit you from range or something and you reflect, you are not going to get most of this damage. And then we have skill number two, Daring Challenge. This is going to apply Taunt and Resolution. Taunt is a very good CC and you should not underestimate it. So you can use it maybe for that purpose. And Resolution, of course, is a very good bone to apply to your group. Skill number one will apply Protection and Swiftness. Again, for you and for the group. Now, I will still go over the skill number one for all the tomes here for a second. But just those are what each of them will do. Next, we have the Tome of Resolve. Skill number five, Eternal Oasis. This is going to apply multiple things. It's going to give us an effect that is going to stay for eight seconds and it will increase the healing effectiveness by 20%. This is not just for you. This is also for the allies who will get it. So this will be very good overall for heals in general. It will also convert five conditions into boons. So not only it will cleanse, it will also convert them into boons. Kind of like Mantra of Lore, the last charge from Mantra of Lore. It will basically do the same thing. But if you notice, Mantra of Lore is going to work on a radius of 180, while Eternal Oasis is going to work in a radius of 600. So this is much, much more. And of course, the extra effect that will increase the healing by 20%. So this is overall more effective. Or sorry, uh, yeah, more effective. Uh, uh, but it, they will both work in a very similar way. Shining River is going to drop an AOE field on the ground like this that will keep pulsing heals every second. Um, the number you see here, this does not include modifiers. However, this also is every second. So the 537, uh, it, you will actually heal for more, but it will be every second. This is not the total amount of heals. And it will stay on the ground like this, as you saw. And it will also apply swiftness. And this will work in the radius of 360. Skill number three, this is going to drop something like this on you and allies. And this is going to apply multiple boons. It will apply vigor, regeneration, and swiftness. Skill two, radiant recovery. Uh, we are not. Skill number two, radiant recovery. This is going to remove two conditions and it is going to heal you per condition removed. And so this is a very good cleanse. And on top of that, it will, it will heal. And again, any number you see on any heal, um, not just those skills, they do not include modifiers. So for example, if you're running monk runes or any kind of healing food you may be taking, uh, they will add modifiers and so they will increase those amount, but it won't show here on the skills. Skill number one, it will also heal you and allies for a range of 600. And then we have our skill Tome F1, uh, Tome of Justice. Skill number five, Ashes of Just. This is going to give people an effect that will make their next attack apply one stack of burning. Um, skill number four, this is going to drop a field on the ground like this. It will keep pulsing, burning and bleeding every second. And then skill number three, rebuke or heated rebuke. This is, let me just uh, change the settings here quickly so that you can see. So this is going to, it will be a targetable skill. You can drop it wherever you want. And when you land it, it is going to pull enemies to you. So it will pull, and this is a very good CC. Skill number two is going to also, again, apply burning and weakness. The difference between those two, that this is going to work around you, while this is going to drop a field on the ground that will stay wherever it is. So this is something you cast as you go, but this will drop on the ground and it will stay there for a few seconds. Skill number one will keep applying burning and vulnerability in uh, on enemies around you. Now, 
all of the skill number one on all of the tombs will work exactly the same way. They will work in a cone. They will not work in a radius. That is a very important concept to understand. So what is the difference? The difference is, let's say, for example, I'm going to use that skill. So this is not necessarily boons. This is going to apply uh, uh, damage and stuff. But this works in radius. You can see like a field on the ground that will work in radius. So this will do damage around in radius. While this is going to work in a cone. So only enemies that are in front of my cone that will take the damage. So if you pay attention to kind of like the animation of the skill, you will see kind of like there's a triangle of sort coming out of your character. That's what we mean by cone. Anyone that is going to be to their side or behind you will not get affected. So let's say if I had someone right behind me here and I use my skill number one, they will not get hit. If I have someone here, for example, where the skirmish merchant is, and I use my skill number one here, they will not get affected. It will only hit those who are going to be in your cone. This doesn't just apply to skill number one. The same thing applies to skill number two for the heal and for skill number three with the boons. Okay? All of them will work only in a cone. So, for example, if I have, let's say, Cassandra behind me here, if I'm using my skill number one, she is not... Hello, guys. Hello, she is not going to get the protection or the swiftness. She is not, simply because she is not going to be behind me and that's not um, not in front of the cone of effect. So, this is how tombs and mantras work. This is a general uh, explanation for both of them. Now, what other skills do we need to understand about Firebrand? So, the most important one is probably stand your ground. This is probably the main source of your stability in World This Is World. This is going to give 5 stacks of stability for about 9 or 10 seconds as you can see on my screen. But keep in mind that I'm running Minestral. May, you may have different uh, doing duration based on the gear you're running, maybe higher or lower. It will also give resolution. And this is going to work in a 600 radius around you. 600 radius is very big by the way. I'm not sure if you can imagine how big that is, but 600 radius is really, really big. So this is a very good source of stability. And the cooldown on it is 24 seconds, so it's not horrible. Uh, this is 24 seconds, by the way, because we are running the pure of voice rate. By default, this is 30. Um, and it's also a stun break. So this is a very good skill. And so it's an instant cast as well. So you don't need to worry about casting time, which means, for example, even if you are uh, using other skills and you stand your ground, it will not interrupt it. You can use other skills while using stand your ground. We already explained the mantras. But usually what you are going to see is... Commanders are going to, including including us, we're going to use Stand Your Ground and we're going to use Mantra of Lore most of the time. The third skill can vary based on what you need. So, for example, Hallowed Ground is something that is going to drop a field on the ground like this. And it is going to give stability and resolution every second for the duration that it will stay. So, this will keep pulsing, um, this will keep pulsing for 8 seconds. And so it will keep giving us a lot of resolution and stability as long as it stays. So this can be a good source of extra stability if you need it. What are other options that we may need? Well, we can run, for example, Mantra of Potence. I guess I can't use it. It's in cooldown. But you can see the skills. This is going to apply quickness and might. And because it's a mantra, it will work the exact same way as the other ones. It will have a total of three charges. The first two are going to give us a quickness of about one second and or one and a half and five stacks of might every time we use it. And then if we use the last charge, this is going to give us quickness for about seven seconds with eight stacks of might. So of course much higher because it's much, much more valuable to use your last charge. So this can be a very good offensive skill if you want to increase the damage of your group, for example. Um, Mantra of Truth is also not a bad option because it applies cripple on the first two charges and immobilize on the last one. This is probably not going to be as used uh, by many. Um, Mantra of Flames is a good option for condition builds or DPS builds in general. Even if you're running power, having a little bit extra DPS is not bad. We can also use Contemplation of Purity if you need extra stun breaks and cleanses. So this is more of a selfish option for you to stay alive if needed, which is completely fine. You need to stay alive before you can help your group. So don't hesitate for a second to have this skill if you feel like you are struggling with conditions of stun breaks. Uh, and then we have Purging Flames. Again, not an option that is used by many, but it's useful. Basically what it will do, it will drop a uh, field on the ground like this. It will keep uh, removing conditions and it is also going to apply damage. And then we also have Wall of Reflection, 
I think most of you are familiar with it probably from PVE. This is going to drop a wall in front of you or a line to reflect kind of thing. Let me show you. And this is going to be very good to handle choke points, for example. Any projectiles are not going to go through the wall. And then this is kind of the same thing as the dome. Skill number three here, with the exception of this will be a line in front of you and this will be a dome. Other options can be sanctuary. This is again, not as commonly used, but it's not a bad option at all. It will drop a bubble like this around you. So it will constantly CC people inside. You can't go in and out of the dome. And it will also heal per second. And the heal you get from it is not bad at all. You can see the value, it's about 700. And this will go even higher with wound modifiers, or sorry, with healing modifiers. And then of course we have other shouts. So for example, we have advance. Um, let me just put it here. I guess I won't because we probably have the same cooldown. Let's just talk about hold the line then. So hold the line will apply protection and regeneration. You can also see on the skill itself, it says condition converted to wounds one. That's again, because we're running the trait pure of voice, which will remove um, one condition to wounds when you use any of our shouts and hold the line counts as a shout. And all of those shouts will work in a 600 radius around you. So this is not a bad option at all. For maybe you need an extra protection or something. Save yourselves. This is a stun break. And it will also give you a bunch of boons when you use it. Especially with high boon duration, this can give you a lot of boons and can be very useful. But you need to be very careful if you decided to use it. Because this is going to take one condition from each of the allies around you and give it to yourself. So... If you are not very careful, and if you are not timing it correctly, you may end up putting yourself in trouble. Because yes, you are going to help your group by taking one condition away from them, but you also may, may end up putting yourself under unnecessary pressure, and you are going to take a lot of condition pressures that you may not be able to cleanse. So for example, if you are going to use save yourselves, and you found that you don't have all of your charges of your mantra floor, you don't even have one of them, then it's not maybe a good idea to save it, to use it at that time. Unless, of course, you needed a stun break, then maybe that's an option. But generally, if you are going to use save yourselves, it's not a terrible option. You just need to be very careful when and where you are going to use it. Uh, advance, it's of course down now. This is going to give ages and stability. Again, in a radius of uh, 600 around you. All of those shouts will do the same thing, 600 radius around you. And this uh, is probably the only shout that is going to have an ammunition. You can see the number two on the top right corner, which means it has two charges. So if I use one charge now, it have a very small cooldown, and then I can use another charge. Okay, so you can see the charge recovery time or count charge. This is at 24 seconds. So if I give it enough time, you can see the white border thing or the white line covering the entire border. When it reaches the beginning, it is going to give me one charge back. Um, stand your ground already explained it. So this covers all of our shouts. As for the signets, there are two signets that are commonly used. So signet of judgment. This is not, your, not going to see it very often, but this is a very good option for stun breaks because if you leave it on passive, it reduces the damage and condition damage you take by 10%. And if you activate it, this is stun break. And so you can basically leave it active. So you can leave it to give the passive effect. And when you need a stun break, you can use it. However, this is more of a selfish um, um, skill. Um, and you should only use it again if you are struggling with the stun breaks. Now, keep in mind that you have another option here for stun breaks, also contemplation or purity. Both of them are selfish options. They will only benefit you. And keep in mind, you're going to hear the term selfish option probably often in world this is world. You need to understand that this is not necessarily like a terrible thing and you're being a selfish person because you need to stay alive first before you can help your party. So don't hesitate for a second to use something that will benefit just to you to stay alive because then you can help your party more. There's no need, there's no need, for example, to use hallow ground. Yes, this is a very good skill that is going to give stability and everything while you are going to die in the process because you don't have enough sun breaks and cleanses. Yes, you are going to probably provide a little bit more stuff for the group, but then you're going to die and then you're not going to have the other stuff. So by switching out one skill, for example, for the sake of something that will be selfish, but it will keep you alive, that's not a bad thing at all. So the term selfish is not necessarily to say that this is a bad thing. It's just to say that this benefits only you. So we have two options that are kind of selfish and that will be our stun breaks. This is contemplation of purity and signet of judgment. What is the difference between both? Signet of judgment is going to have a much lower cooldown, almost half, but it will only stun break. However, contemplation of purity can be used for emergency cleanse or emergency stun break, but it have 40 seconds cooldown. 
why segment of judgment have 25 seconds so you decide if you feel like you are only struggling maybe with thumb breaks and you just need an extra thumb break segment of judgment is probably a better option but if you feel like i need an extra thumb break and an extra cleanse or one of both then you can use contemplation of purity <coughs> Uh, Signet of Mercy is probably going to be used much more often and this is going to res a lies. So if you have someone that is downed and you drop Signet of Mercy on them, it is going to res where you are going to drop it. So if I have someone down here and I drop it here, this is going to res them. But as you can see, it have a little bit of a casting time, two seconds. And so if you're not careful, you can get interrupted or something. Um, and so you may want to be careful when using it and make sure you have like edges or stab or something that you don't get interrupted. Uh, so this is a very useful skill. It has a long cooldown, of course, but it can it can significantly change the tide of the fight because just one person, um, you saving them, you maybe they are your support or healer, or maybe very high DPS, or at the very least, they're not going to rally five other enemies. So this is something that can be very useful, but you should not use it unless you know how to use it, how you're comfortable with it, and you are you are sure you are going to do it at the right time, at the right situation. You will not get interrupted. You will be comfortable with the two seconds cast time and such. And again, always keep in mind that you are more important than anything else. So if you feel like, yes, I can have Signet of Mercy and I can try to res, but let's say you found that every time you are trying to use it to res allies, you are maybe distracted and you feel like the, the commander is moving around you, but you, can't, you need to stand still to use your Signet because you can't move and cast at the same time or something then this is going to end up harming you. And you, while trying to risk someone, you're probably going to end up dying in the process. So that's not going to help anyone. So don't use those kind of skills unless you are comfortable with them, unless you know how to use them, and maybe practice on them a little before using them in hard fights and stuff like this. Um, before we go into traits, do we have any questions? I have whispers disabled, but I can read guild chat and I can read local chat. So feel free to ask me. Um, so next, let's go ahead and talk about some of the traits. And I'm only going to mainly talk about the fire band traits because the other options can be completely up to you based on the situation. So in the fire band trait line, let's talk about uh, this trait. This one is going to give quickness when you use your healing skill. So mantra of solace, I'm going to just equip this trait for now. When I use Mantra of Solace, this is going to give me quickness because this is my healing skill. If I use quickness, if I use this again, it doesn't give me quickness. So why? Because the skill have or the trait have seven seconds cooldown. There must have passed seven seconds first before each charge for it to give you quickness. So if I use one charge now, I get quickness again. If I wait seven seconds and then use it again, then I will get more quickness. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to count in your head seven seconds. It just means that you need to understand that you can't spam. You're not going to get quickness every time. It will only give you quickness if seven seconds have passed. But in return, you're going to have five um, pages only for your tombs. However, this trait is going to do the exact opposite. This is going to give you three more, more pages. And so you're going to be able to use your tomb skills much more often. So this is probably the option that is going to be more widespread used and this is option we are going to use and prefer but this option is not bad either if you need more dps for example or you're trying to be more aggressive or offensive or something like this however again remember that your main job as a firebrand is support first and so if you felt like by having this trait you are not able to keep your party alive or keep yourself alive as much then definitely you should have this one instead and then we have weighty terms so this also changed a little in how it works. It used to apply slow in general when you would use any of your charges. But now, this is going to only apply slow on the final charge. So what the final charge is, remember, you will even notice that when I use two skills, so look at the icon itself. So this is one charge, two charge. The icon itself, even you notice it changed. The, the, the way it looks changed. This is the last charge. When I use that last charge, this is when I'm going to get the slow. Um, but on top of that, it is also going to make the charge recovery times reduced. Now, it's very important to understand that we're talking about the charge recovery time. So here's what I mean. I'm going to switch this trait just so that you can see. Mantra of Solace is going to have 30 seconds cooldown. Let's just, just come up. And I'm going to charge it. 
And if you look at the charge recovery time now, it will tell you 12. This have a recovery time of 12 seconds. Okay? But what this will do is the mantra charge recovery time are going to be reduced. So if I, let's just, I'm going to use all the charges because I want you to see. It will go on 30 seconds cooldown. Okay? So let it come off cooldown here again, and then we're going to use this trait, and we're going to see the difference. But until then, let's talk about this one. So Stillward Speed is going to give ages, or so it's going to give us quickness, when we use ages or stability, which is basically something you're going to be doing a lot as a firebend. So I'm going to show you the skills that will give ages and stability in a second, but Monster of Solace is almost ready, so let's see what will weighty terms do. So if I charge this now, I can see that the charge now is 9 seconds instead of 12. This is the charge recovery time. If I use all of them again, it will still go on 30 seconds. So this is not going to reduce all of the cooldowns for all of the mantras. This is specifically going to reduce the cooldown for the, for the charges. So we're talking about the three, the three uh, pages thing or the three charges thing. It's not the mantra itself when it goes on cooldown, it's the charges from the mantra. It's very important to understand that. So let's continue to talk about slow speed. This is going to give us quickness when we apply ages or stability, and it has 7 seconds, just like this one. So where is your ages and stability coming from? I'm going to just change the build here, and this is probably what you're going to see most people use, something like this. So where is your stability and ages coming from? Mantra of Liberation is going to apply stability, which is something you are probably going to use often. And then you have Mantra of Solace. This is going to also something you'll probably use often. It will give ages. So just from those two skills, you should be able to apply plenty of stab and ages often enough to proc those two traits. And then, of course, Stand Your Ground is also going to apply stability. And then we have skill number four, uh, five on your tome, Unbroken Line, also will apply ages and stability. So this skill alone can proc those two traits. And then we have, let's see here, you have your mace. Skill number three is going to apply ages. And then you have your shield number four is also going to apply ages. So also if you're using Hallow Ground, for example, you are also applying uh, stability. If you have something like advance, this is also going to apply ages. So this will also apply um, quickness. And so as you can see, you as a fire band, you have plenty of sources for stability and ages, which means you are able to apply a lot of quickness for the people. The last one, Legendary Lore, this is going to make it so your tome skills will apply another benefit. So your F1 will apply an extra burning. Uh, we're not we're not making a squad just yet. Uh, skill number, or sorry, your tome of resolve, all of your skills are going to apply regeneration. And from the skill from your tome number three, it's going to apply protection. So all of your skills are going to now apply protection on top of the other, other benefits it will provide. And for the skills that will already apply protection, it will basically increase the duration. Um, what else do we have? So just from, this is actually a very important choice because each one of them is going to make something different. So weighty terms is a good option if you feel like you really need the extra uh, cooldown from the mantras. Uh, still with speed is something that is going to give a lot of quickness and so this is good if you need extra DPS or you want to be more aggressive Legendary Lore is a very good option if you need extra defense in general and you need the extra uh, protection for example um, or you need the extra uh, regeneration protection by the way is not a bone you should underestimate it reduces the damage by 33% which is basically a very big deal so um, by having more protection, if you're not able to keep it up 100%, maybe based on your competition or something, then this, this is not a bad option at all. So each one of them is useful. You just need to decide which, will suit, which one will suit your playstyle more. For the Grandmaster trait, probably, probably, in terms of support firebrand, this will probably be the one that will make more sense, Lord Master. Because what this will do is it will retain the resolve passive effect while it's in cooldown, which means, remember the red thing we spoke about? So when I use this, this is now Tom of Resolve is in red, it's called Dormant Resolve, and it's not doing passive stuff for me anymore. And I can't get the benefit from it either from the activating it unless this is not red anymore. But this basically means that the passive effect from it is going to keep working, which is the heal, because you heal by default from it every second. It's not really a very big amount, but you will retain the heal effect from it. But more important is, you will regenerate pages quicker. 
Okay, so the, the pages from your tones will charge a little bit faster. The other two options here are, it will give you one charge of Ashes of Josh, which is basically extra burning with your only next attack. The effect itself is going to stay for 10 seconds, but it doesn't mean your next attacks for 10 seconds will apply burning. It's basically any attack, literally just one attack um, within that window will apply burning. So a skill, for example, that will hit five enemies will not apply five stacks of burning. It will apply one stack of burning for only one of them that will be hit random kind of target. Um, and then we have Stoic um, Demeanor. This is going to retain the passive effect from the Courage, but it will also give us boons when we disable or immobilize or slow an enemy. This is going to give us resistance and might in a 300 radius. Um, so, for example, this can work well with weighty terms if you find yourself using maybe the last charge of your tomes often and you're maybe slowing enemies often or something like this. But again, probably this is not going to be the best option. Probably, you're not going to find it used very often. Probably is the one that will be more beneficial for support firebrand for most builds is going to be this one. But as usual, please understand that we are explaining this from my personal point of view and what our guild will probably use. You may end up having other commanders and other guilds that will use different builds or maybe they will prefer one of those options based on their playstyle or such. Um, as for the, the other traits, again probably are going to find something similar to that setup maybe with few exceptions like for example if people are using hallowed ground you are probably going to have master of consecration um so this can be something um you may also if you are personally struggling with sustain like you are having a hard time stay alive one of the things you can do is you can change honor and you can or honor or virtues one of the other and you can have valor and Valor here is going to give you one of two options. Altruistic Healing is going to give you heal per wound you are applying to yourself and allies. So just to give you, no problem, that's okay, no need to apologize. Um, so just to give you an idea what that means, if you use your staff and you are applying Might per Pulse, every one stack will apply as a separate boon. So just by using Empower, you are applying a lot of Might for a lot of people. And so for every stack of Might on every one, including yourself, is going to proc this trait. So this is of this is very good monk's focus is going to make any of your meditation skills apply extra healing so this can be useful for example if you are going to use something like contemplation of purity it will give you extra healing from them and it will also reduce the cooldown on them um, you can also of course maybe have another trait or another thing for meditation um, so virtues or sorry valor in general is not a bad option if you feel like you are struggling with sustain and you need to stay alive more remember what i said this is definitely a selfish option. This is not going to benefit your group as much as the other options as virtues or valor. However, the important thing is for you to stay alive. If you can't stay alive, you can't help your party. And so don't hesitate to change the, one of the other traits to have this, for example. And maybe you can also have strength in numbers for the extra protection or something. With maybe a strength of the fallen for extra cleanses or smiter's boon will probably work well with monk's focus. Basically just extra sustain for you until you maybe get more experience, until you learn more, until you feel like you are comfortable enough with the build and skill, or maybe in general you are new to world this is world and you are not used to big fights yet and you feel like you are dying often. Don't hesitate to do that until you feel comfortable enough and you feel like you are ready to go. And once you feel like you are at that point and you're not dying as often, maybe you can then switch and have virtues and valor, or sorry, uh, honor again to uh, benefit your party and your group a little bit more. Um, so what else are we going to cover here? I think for the most part we are done. I don't think really there's anything else uh, we need to do. I will still explain to you kind of like how I would like to use a build. But before that, do we have any questions? I will take that as a no. So here is how I will personally use that build in a beginner friendly way if I were you. Just to make things very simple. So. I would actually suggest not using Hallowed Ground, especially if you are new, because it will need a little bit of practice with how you are going, when and where you are going to place it. And I know from experience that a lot of people who are probably going to be new to World This Is World or new to the game in general are going to have a hard time moving and casting skills at the same time. Like this is actually something you need to practice on. But if you are comfortable with it, then Hallowed Ground is a very good option. If you are not, maybe you can have something else. For now, I'm just going to put Advance. Okay. So, here's how I would do it. Let's say we have, I'm just going to take it now to put markers here quickly. 
So let's say we have an enemy zag here on the marker. Okay, actually, yeah, let's just put it here for now. And I'm trying to push. So your job as a guardian, um, sure, but we are we don't have a squad or anything yet. But sure, here you go. No, I don't mind. Um, your job as a guardian, it's very important to understand. It's stability. Your job is to provide stability. Everything else you will provide is extra. It's very good. It's very useful. You are going to apply a lot of cleanses, a lot of heals, a lot of other boosts, but it's mainly stability. And so if you are doing everything else perfectly, you're applying tons of conditions, sorry, tons of cleanses, lots of boons and stuff, but you are not doing your proper job in stability, your party is going to struggle. However, if you are doing your stability very well, you are timing it very well, you are keeping it, uh, uptime stability very often, you are stun breaking people often, and you are not doing the other stuff as good, like you are not cleansing as often, you are not maybe healing mm -hmm. as often, you are not providing other boons as often, that's actually a better option. Like I would, I would rather see, for example, our guardians in general, regardless of the build you are using, provide better stability and not as much of the other stuff than have it the other way around. So if I were you and I'm starting on Firebrand, you need to understand that Firebrand is an overwhelming class. It's completely, like I, I have heard this complaint before. I'm playing a Firebrand, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just smashing buttons and I feel overwhelmed and I'm lost. You're not alone. This is Firebrand. It's an overwhelming class. It's a complicated class. There's a lot, a lot you need to pay attention to. You have tombs. Each one of them have five different skills. Each one of them will do five different things. And then you have your mantras. And now with the series charges, and you need to recharge them. And the last one will work different than the previous ones. It's There's a lot you need to keep in mind. And a lot you need to keep track of. It's completely fine if you felt lost. It personally took me at the beginning while learning for a band, maybe about three months, four months, I'm not kidding. And a couple extra months just to learn how to command on it because I would just die immediately whenever we would go into any fight. So don't worry about it. Take your time to learn. But if you're on you, what I would suggest is try not to overwhelm yourself with everything else. Try to focus on stability as much as you can. And when you feel like you are at the a, a, at a right let's say comfort level and experience level that you know when and where you are supposed to use your stability then you can progress with other stuff so let's talk about stability first what what is your main source of stability the stand your ground so as we are pushing into an enemy group or they are pushing us assuming this is a green marker then i'm going to use my stand your ground this way i provide a lot of stability for my group and we're not going to get cc'd as much so this is the first option for stability this is your main thing as long as this is available and you are engaging or getting pushed by an enemy group, you should use this. Okay, well, what if this option is on cooldown? Where else is my stability coming from? You have Mantra of Liberation. The first two charges are going to apply one stack of stability. But the last one, if you use it, this is going to apply five stacks of stability. And it's, it, it's basically kind of like stand your ground. The only difference is the radius. There's an open mic, if we can please... Uh, mute or uh, lower our gain will be appreciated. It's not very distracting. It's not very loud, but it's noticeable. It will be appreciated if we can please just lower the gain a little or mute or something. Um, but let's get back to mantra of liberation. So if stand your ground doesn't cool down, if stand your ground doesn't cool down, and we're going to use our last charge of mantra of liberation, this can be kind of like a backup for stand your ground when it's in cool down. Okay. Um, so I think it's Lily in our Discord or something um, with the open mic. It will be appreciated if you can mute yourself or lower the gain because it's just a little distracting. Or Lord, sorry, not Lily, Lord. Is it, is it me? Yeah, it's you. I'm sorry. If you can please just mute yourself. Ah, lower, okay, okay. Lower the gain. I'll go mute. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. So as we said, Mantra of Liberation, the last tech is basically, you can consider it as a backup option for Stand Your Ground. So if Stand Your Ground was in cooldown and you are pushing or getting pushed by another enemy group, then you can use that last charge of your Mantra of Liberation and you're giving yourself a lot of stability. Okay, what if those two options are on cooldown? Stand Your Ground is in cooldown, Mantra of Liberation is on cooldown. What do I do now? Well, you have your Storm of Courage. By going to it, because of this trait, you are applying also stability. So again, I'm going to use this as I'm pushing. Here's the stability. On top of that, you have unbroken line from it. This is also going to apply stability. It's going to give you only one stack, but nonetheless, it's stability. It's useful. But also, keep in mind that you have stalwart stand. Stalwart stand is going to apply resistance. So, here's what you need to know. There are two types of CCs in the game. 
there's something called hard CC and there's soft CC. Hard CC, we're talking about things like stun, daze, knockback, pull, that kind of stuff. This is hard CC. You prevent that by having stability. So if you have stability and someone tried to pull you or try to knock you back, you will not get knocked back. What will happen instead? It will remove one stack of stability. However, things like immobilize, chill, and cripple, those are not hard CCs. Those are called soft CCs. Even if you have all the stability in the world, you will still get immobilized. You will still get chilled. You will still get crippled. What will counter that is resistance. Resistance is a boon that will not allow those conditions to take effect. It will not cleanse them. It will not remove them. They will still be on your bar, but it will not have an effect. So if I have resistance and I'm immobilized, I will still be able to move. And so if you think about it, if you have resistance and stability, it basically means you are unstoppable. No CCs are going to affect you. No hard CCs, no soft CCs. And you will notice that CCs are basically the most important thing in World vs. World. This is what kills people. Most of the time, it's not the amount of damage you take. Most of the time, it's the fact that you are pulled away from your group, for example, or locked down in place and you are taking all the damage in the world because you are getting CC'd. And so, if you can have resistance and stability as you are pushing, you are going to, you are going to benefit your group a lot. So, Again, based on your experience level, maybe you can time your tombs in the right way and such. But if you are if you are a beginner, if you are new to Firebrand, try to make it easy for yourself. So maybe I would start with F3. I already have it prepared like this. And as I'm pushing into the enemy group, I'm going to use my stand your ground and I'm going to use my skill number four and five. Even though this is going to give me one extra stability, but also the other one, well, like uh, I will already have the stability from Sandy Ground, but it will still give me the unbroken line, it will still give me the protection, and it will give me the ages. So this is very, very good. So I'm, I'm going to use all the three skills together to give me resistance, protection, stability, ages, extra toughness, and even more stability from Sandy Ground with resolution. This is going to be very, very helpful. And as we said, if Stand Your Ground was on cooldown, then you have your Mantra Charges from uh, uh, Mantra of Liberation, and then you have Unbroken Line, that will also give you one stack of stability and such. If I were you, and you are starting to new Firebrand, I would just worry about this. I would just not worry about the other stuff too much. Of course, you can use them if you want, business situation. But I wouldn't try to overwhelm myself. I would just land those. And then when I feel like, okay, you know what? I'm now at a point where I know when to use my stability. I know what to do with Stand Your Grounds and Cooldown. I know what's the difference between the first two charges and the last charge from Mantra of Liberation. I'm used to using them now. I know how to handle myself, how to give my party proper step and such. How about let's add cleanses to it? So now you can start relying more of mon more on Mantra of Lore, for example, for cleanses. So now try to make it one of your jobs that you will focus on is also uh, your cleanses and try to make sure you are cleansing conditions of your party as well, which also means it's not just Mantra of Lore because you also have more cleanses from your Tome of Resolve. So you have your skill number five, Eternal Oasis, this will remove five conditions, convert them into wounds. And then you also have Radiant Recovery that will remove two conditions and it will heal you for condition removed. And you can also maybe have more heals with Shining River, maybe just extra heals from your auto attack and such. So now you are you are doing stab and healing. Okay, well, how about if you feel like you have reached a point where you are able also to do that? What else can you do? In that case, you can also do some CCs to help your party. So for example, from your Tomb of Courage, you have your skill number three, Rebuke. It's a very good CC, it will pull allies. This can be very useful in certain situations. You also have your line of forwarding on your staff. This is a line that people cannot cross. So it's a very good option for CC. And depending on the build you are running, you can run an axe. Again, this is based on commanders and, and what they require and such. But you can run an axe. And in that case, axe is going to give you access to skill number three, Blazing Edge. This is also a pull. So that's extra CC. But of course, keep in mind that by doing that, you don't have access to mace, which is which means a little bit less heals, a little less uh, boons. So again, it depends on the style of play, what the commander needs at the time, but just keep that in mind. So you as a firebrand, you can do a lot, but the class itself is overwhelming. It's okay if you feel lost. It's okay if you feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not sure what's happening here, but take it one step at a time. Don't try to do everything at the beginning at the same time. Don't try to cleanse and heal and stab and CC because depending on your experience level, um, you may struggle with that. Maybe you are already have playing playing World of World for a lot of time or something that can be easier for you. But especially if you are new to World of World and new to Firebend, then it becomes a bigger problem. So this is 
to recap, what I would do is stand your ground as we are pushing or getting pushed. If that wasn't cool down, I'm going to use my mantra of liberation. And if I needed even extra step, I have my unbroken line. And don't forget that this, the resistance is very important. So in that case, it will be four, five, and stand your ground. Anytime we are pushing or getting pushed, if you have them available. If you needed then the cleanses, then you have your Tome of Resolve. You can switch out here quickly, Eternal Oasis, and then maybe into your Radiant Recovery, and then maybe a couple of Charged Mantra Floor. I just cleanse a lot of conditions from my party. Maybe we are good now, we don't need any heals, any cleanses, let me do some CCs as we are pushing or something. And then, okay, I'm, we're getting ready for the next push, I'm going to go to my F3 again. My 4 is probably ready now, I'm going to use my Stand Your Ground and 4. And as you will notice, this skill, for example, was on cooldown. Okay, so that's okay. You don't have to wait, for example, until 5 comes off cooldown. If one of them is only available, then use it. Don't worry about it. You will also notice that if you use all of your pages, your tomb will automatically get stored and you will get back to your weapons. But the pages should come back very quickly and you should be able to use your tombs. So, that is it. I have nothing else to add. Do we have any questions? I will take that as a no. Okay, so this is streamed and the link is going to stay there. Um, which traits are you talking about? This is, it, uh, it completely depends on your own play style and what your group needs. For us personally, we are probably going to need uh, the Archivist of Whispers uh, just for the extra pages. We are probably going to use it at the beginning. And maybe as we gain more experience, if you felt like we don't need it as much, maybe we can switch option to uh, Liberator's Vow for the extra quickness. But maybe depending on the other commander or um, group you are following, they may require the opposite based on if you want to be aggressive, for example, or something like this. So this is the option we will personally use. Okay, but again, keep in mind that other commanders may need something else. Any other questions? Okay, so as I was saying, this is streamed and the link is going to remain there for people. You can check it out anytime you want, but that will be it. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to end the stream and the training now, and maybe we can take five minutes break, and then we can go do some more this is all together. So let's take five minutes break. I will end the stream.